Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, very excited for today. Uh, we have Lizelle, who's an AIE grad with us. Uh, if you have any questions, Lizelle will be talking today about the indie game that she's working on, creating the, uh, I guess we call it, do we call it fan project, unofficial Pokemon Yana series? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But if you have any questions, make sure you pop them in the chat and we'll try and get them uh, get to them. Uh, we have only half an hour today, but we have about five hours worth of questions. So with that, we'll hand it right across to Jess, uh, who'll start getting into them now. Take it away, Jess. Cool. Thank you so much, Craig. And uh, yeah, I've got some exciting uh, news to find out from you about your whole journey from AIE. So let's dive in. So obviously you're a graduate from AIE. Um, what course did you do and when did you graduate? Because you're, yours is a little bit different story than most people. Yeah, I, um, I studied the Advanced Diploma of 3D Art and Animation, um, which is a two-year course. And I did the Game Art section of the second part. And then I did the Graduate Diploma of Business Management, uh, of Management Learning, which is the um, GDML course, which is post uh, graduate, uh, the post advanced diploma, which is the incubator. It, it's also incubator, which is where AIE helps grow and sponsor uh, basically a studio, um, um, your own indie studio, which is which was really helpful. I graduated yeah, that cool. in, um, yeah, 2019, 2018. 20, yeah. yeah, nice. We'll get, get back to talking about the graduate diploma um, course in a, in a little bit, but what have you been doing uh, since your graduation and also I guess, Semi, what have you been doing in that uh, GDML uh, program? I've been, um, uh, well, during the GDML program, we were, uh, we get uh, these assignments and projects and goals that we have to hit with a project that we decide to uh, work on. And um, we have, well, we had two teachers that helped uh, develop and learn from, because they had through their expertise and experience to like uh, create their own studio and how to, create a pipeline and a process and stuff. And that was really cool. I'm the, I'm the, studio, the studio lead artist and game designer for uh, the studio Vivig, uh, Vivig Studios. Sorry, I said that a lot. Um, and <laughs> yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's been uh, a lot of fun um, and learned so much. Yeah, tell, uh, so tell us a little bit about your current role <laughs> at, at uh, current Vivig. Role, um, yeah, like I said, lead artist and uh, game designer. I created the story and the concepts for the for the game Avery, which is our first project. And I also design all the merchandise and um, all the do a little marketing and the levels and uh, building, building and creating uh, in game and in engine all the AI at the, all the Unity uh, stuff like all the enemies and all that. Yeah, yeah. So all the yeah, stuff so that we're seeing on the screen right now. Yeah, yeah, basically. I, I, build all, I put it in the scene, I made all those little levels, <laughs> characters and stuff. It's super cute, oh, it's just... super lovable and super cute. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about like, what the game is? The game um, is like... a 2D... Oh. Yeah, it's a 2D platformer, um, based, uh, all hand-drawn, and it's based around a character named A. Lurie, which is uh, inspired by red pandas, and it raises awareness for endangered species. So every character in this game is based off an endangered animal, and we have actually an encyclopedia screen uh, where that you can like that you can um, like load up on the screen, and you can see which animals you've encountered and where they're in, what they are based off in real life, and their conservation status. Yeah. Wow. And what led you to creating a story like this? Well, um, the initial prototype was actually from a. Uh, from a like a swinging mechanic that um, was made with another uh, graduate diploma Judy Mel course uh, student named Damon, and uh, yeah, and um, I made a bunch of different character designs um, based off this. That like one of them was even a chameleon, which sorry I didn't I didn't get to you guys in time, <laughs> and uh, yeah, but I ended up going with um, this little red panda, uh, and I made it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and um, yeah, over time I've developed on that story, and I, I think I, th I thought it was like really important to um, have a, like a theme for this, and yeah, so um, yeah. yeah, it's super amazing. And um, where where is this game now, and where has it um, has it taken you um, 
anywhere? Because I see the little badges. Is that have you taken it to any expos or anything like that? Yes, yes, is... yes. During our first year in, uh, in sorry, in, during our first year in GDML, we um, went to PAX uh, for PAX twenty eighteen, and that was really exciting, and it was such an amazing experience. And how, um, how... yeah, and... Ooh, go on. Oh, I was going to say, um, how how did the audience take it? Yeah, it was um, really, really, really good feedback. It was, I, I got like, yeah, a lot of amazing feedback. A lot of people really liked the way Luria. I made um, merchandise and stuff for it as well. As you can see, those pins. Those pins were actually from our 2019 that we also, um, AI helped uh, support us and uh, financially and, um, yeah, set up and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's super nice. Thanks. <laughs> it was really exciting. Oh, awesome. Um, and uh, hey, let's go back to, I guess, pre AIE and, and all this. What, why, what sparked your interest in getting into art and especially game art? How did that all start? Well, <laughs> ever since I was a kid, um, I was always like into, oh, sorry, I'm disappearing. I was always really into uh, uh, designing games and characters. I um. I when I was really into like Tamagotchi and Digimon, like that sort of, sort of stuff, and I even like designed my own little like like fake Digivice or Tamagotchi inspired clone thing. But instead, I even had like little buttons that you could hold, like press and like walk around the overworld with this little character. And I I don't know, that was <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun. So ever since then, I've been making up like characters, and I even made like Pokemon back in the day, and yeah, and. Yeah, and then I went into um, went to an art high school called Dalachul Visual Arts and Design, and uh, then I like really um, wanted to pursue this career in the arts industry, whether it be game or film or comic or or yeah or animation. Yeah, and then That's I awesome. did a, so a bit. A bit. Yeah, that one. Go on. I was going to say, uh, when was the first time that you um, kind of made a little game? How old were you? Do you remember? Oh, my first game. Oh. I don't know. Because you were talking about yeah, uh, like when you were younger, you were like making little characters and little games. How how old do you think you were? Uh, not like a, an official oh, game, but just like a little playing uh, around with sketches. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I was um, I don't know. I it was so long ago. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do remember just yeah. It was. I don't know. I think between six to 10 years old. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so long ago. Started young, started young. Um, yeah, but I, um, I started messing around with um, uh, Game Maker, I think it was, making a 2D platformer way back when, in like 2013 or 20, 2012 or something, back in high school. Yeah, oh, that's, so, that's so fun. Um, and <laughs> can you... <laughs> Um, can you tell me maybe a little bit more about uh, when you're developing uh, a game, especially a 2D game, what is your kind of process? Can you elaborate on, uh, like you can see here, there's, uh, I think this image now, it's kind of like a, that's before the game um, that was finished. Um, yeah, how do you get from like here to what we've seen just before? Yeah, well, you can see in this, uh, this um, video that, um, I was, I think it's my, the first ever actual 2D platformer I've ever made. So I was learning the, uh, the gist of how to design a character that you can read, but also like has emotion, but also is like memorable, I guess. Um, I learned that like three quarter view was also really important for designing a character in 2D platformer, not going straight forward like it is now. Uh, silhouette and movement, really important. I go from, I like, I think, the mechanics of the game are probably the first things you you figure out and like then you work on the character and the design of it all and that it kind of like builds on itself from there so you have to like make sure that the the way the character moves and the way it's animated and the way it lives um really like like breathes through with the mechanics you know what i mean like if, mm, if, mm. Like, it feels right breathe. it feels right yeah yeah so there's climbing there's there's climbing, there's little attacks and stuff like that, but like the way, like the swinging and the throwing mechanics that are in this game, um, the like with the rap, like you see those rocks that float up? That was, that's like part of the story of the game and that's how that character, like yeah, so. 
Yeah, I, I've always, because um, I did 3D art and animation in AIE uh, for the, during the advanced diploma. And because that was after I did a diploma of concept art and interactive media and digital media at um, Enmore Design Center. And I wanted to learn the entire pipeline from concept to finished final in-game art. So I've done 3D and 2D and yeah, and yeah, it's, um, it's really important, I think, to learn for every artist to learn the entire pipeline, I think, because it helps you really like design. If you're designing characters for 2D or 3D, it's like different. It's completely different, you know? Yeah. yeah awesome. And, and you're the main character here. Did you have a whole bunch of sketches before you came up with this design? Did, um, did you have yeah, different yeah, like yes. looks and feels and colors? And tell us a bit about the process of finding this main character. Yeah, actually. Um, uh, like I said initially, it was I went through a bunch of different ideas with the first swinging prototype, and it was like one of them was even in like a the one I can remember. The other one was a chameleon that used its tongue to like swing around and stuff, and had to collect items. But I ended up going with this one. Um, initially, I'll, I'll see if I can pull up an old, old, old image of a Lurie where. Um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, yeah. It, Aluri used to be it used to be a faster paced game, so it was actually a much thinner like design. Uh, I'll probably I'll probably bring it up again later. Oh, actually, here it is. Wait, no, it's not. <laughs> See if Craig <laughs> can um, the... pop it up in time. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, so what, when you said it was a, I'll show you. yeah, that's all right. Um, so were you saying if it was a faster game? Does that mean like it was a speedrunner kind of? Yeah, yeah. Like game design. Actually, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I remember talking to a uh, some speedrunners at PAX 2018, and um, like really learning about like how we could, as developers, in, like engage and properly assist them in making a game that is built for speedrunning. And mm -hmm. they said that uh, don't make the game for speedrunning. We will make. Like we'll work around your game, you know what I mean. So we yeah. just added more features. Like we've got timing in the game. We've got like uh, amount of damage you take at the end of every level. You can like basically see, like players can see customly how many like like uh, uh, what they want to achieve in their own game. But we try to um, kind of reward players for for however they pl they decide to play, whether it be exploration or time based or like like how, how little damage they take or if they defeat all the enemies, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Cool. So, um, yeah, so. Pax always um, loves their speedrunners. <laughs> yeah, always yeah, yeah. It's, it's really cool. I've got, I've got a, lot of, um, a lot of friends who do speedrunning as well. And yeah, yeah it's, it's awesome. good. It's <laughs> um, all right, well, that's like, this, this is amazing game and I'm sure Got one more question before we get on to, uh, yeah, no, nah, I'm sure a lot of people out there are, are waiting around for this. Um, but what, is, what, is, what does a day-to-day -day look like for a game artist? Well, you know, you just like, you get out of bed, you go on your computer, and then you work until you go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because so, especially, especially during this whole period, I, I've been working at home for maybe almost a year now time flies but yeah um it's 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 a lot of work and you have to learn to balance between your the passion of your projects and also the like balancing of the passion of just regular art and finding that yeah just really balancing yes. do, do you find that you do much art outside of game development yeah yeah which is why the yen art project came around as well which actually absorbed <laughs> all my spare time because I, I tend to do studies and whenever I, I used to do studies every morning and or well now it's like, like basically weekly now and um, I always have that itch to just make art, single art projects of like different styles as like, like different I do animations for friends or emotes and stuff like that or just yeah like really when, when you say studies what, what do you mean by that oh like um like uh kind of like to, like portrait studies or paintings or learning uh, anatomy for animals or humans and doing life drawing and stuff like that and yeah 
yes. So always developing your your art skills, even though you might not be using that particular area right now. You're still, as you say, like learning anatomy or different like poses and all that sort of stuff. So you're always developing your skills. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it feels like um, stagnant. If you don't like, I always had this idea that if if you can't redo what you just learnt, then you didn't really learn it. So I try to mm. learn and then redo everything as much as possible. Yeah, that's that's really awesome. Um, just looking at the time, I could literally talk for ages. Um, let's talk about Yena. <laughs> what what is this, and Sweet. how did it come about? Please tell me all about it. <laughs> yeah, it was a. Um, uh, it was initially the original tweet, which was Pokemon Yen and Pokemon Na, and I was just like, uh, when they finally make uh, Pokemon Australia, which is. Um, uh, yeah, it was just originally a joke I did while at AIE, actually, while I was meant to be doing my work. <laughs> I, um, yeah, <laughs> and it became like a Twitter moment, which was wild, and I had never seen, like, I never expected that before, and people were just talking about it non-stop, and it was a lot of fun, actually. And I've, I've been making, um, Fakemon or Pokemon for, for a long time in my life. I, I wish I, I wish I got this out sooner, but I have a lot of like really old art and designs and stuff of like when I was a kid that I've done, and this was just like another, I guess, an excuse to really like work on it. And I have um, this, uh, yeah. And after that, like there was some like ideas of like what could be like uh, the trainers or the Elite Four or something, and I worked on the um, the champion, which was and the professor, which is Steve Irwin. And that went viral too. It was like different, like levels. Of... Oh, it's a bit compressed, isn't it? <laughs> I, I sent another one. Maybe that one worked better. Um, yeah, it was like, yeah, complete. Like it was all over articles and stuff, and everyone was cheering about Steve Irwin, we're like, because he's a hero, right? With especially with animal wildlife conservation, and yeah, and even like, um, I think. Uh, Nova Brisbane or something started contacting me. I got, I, I was kind of like, like a whirlwind. I got kind of a bit lost <laughs> with all the stuff that was happening. Cause that happened around uh, the same time the Uniqlo thing happened where I ended up, there was this, I don't know if, if anyone really knew how big that was, but it was pretty big for me cause it was official. I ended up becoming one of the winners, which I've never had an experience in my life. And I got to at, like create official Pokemon merchandise. And I guess that really like invigorate, like invigorated me or encouraged me to work on this like stuff. I would think, you think, you never think that fan only gets you really anything, right? <laughs> it's like, it was actually super fun. Um, wow. Yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, and then from there I ended up making starters for the Pokemon Pokedex and then and, um, and the initial like images and tweets were very diff uh, kind of different to what it ended up being a like a full project because it, it just kept getting more and more viral and then of course the tweet that I guess everyone's seen and then like press start Australia and stuff like that interviewed me and it was it was just like from there it was it was really it was just like a project I've always wanted to do which is which was fun yeah. yeah, that's awesome. From someone who, honestly, I don't know heaps about Pokemon, but I'm sure Craig, I don't know, Craig, Craig's been like obsessed with this whole shebang, so I'm sure he might have a question or two. I'll, I'll pass it over to him if yeah, you definitely. want to ask something. Okay, so many questions. Uh, again, super quick time. Um, how do you start from an initial idea? Like, do you have a just a whole bunch of things that you're like, okay, this could potentially be a character, or do you look at existing characters? Yeah, um, well, I guess uh, when it comes to the Australia Pokedex that I've been working on, um, which is the Australia one, um, I've tried to learn from, um, I've actually got the book right here. Ooh. It's an official Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra, or uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon art book. I don't know how this is supposed to work here. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with like, all the concepts and stuff from in the game uh, that they made. Uh, which was, to me, was fascinating to learn how they did this and how they went through the entire process. Um, so I kind of wanted to, as I guess a concept artist, I wanted to kind of uh, replicate that and see how far I could take it um, to make a whole Pokemon, I guess, region and world. 
and how I could, um, can, I guess I, I feel like with Gala region and with, um, you know, far, they, like, they really, um, they really like, I guess got so much inspiration from the initial, like, uh, countries that they, or cities that they were inspired by. And I feel like I wanted to see if I could do that for Australia and give it justice. Mm-hmm. And like, and really like, even if they make an official Australia Pokemon region, I'll see if like, if I could, if, if I can like nail it in a way as well, or give, or even challenge them to see how well they can do. Cause yeah, I tried to implement like both humor and relatability with uh, the character designs, but also like a, a marketability and I couldn't I make it as iconic as possible. When it comes, do you want to know how I came up with the starters? Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, the starters were, um, I, I, the starters were, uh, well, I originally didn't want platypus and kangaroo and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, that's too obvious. But then I, after doing some silhouettes and some like sketches and I was going through like marine iguanas and stuff like that for the water type and for grass, I, I ended up just like finding like this this one idea if, if uh, with like the the swimming cap and stuff, and I was like, hey, this works really well. Like it, it was very nostalgic for me, I guess. Like when you do swimming lessons in in school, it was like it was such. It's kind of like a big part of I guess Australian culture to do swimming lessons. Did you guys do that? It's yeah. super cute. Yeah, yeah, no, a hundred percent. I'm yeah, nostalgic and vibes. Yeah. I I love seeing the like the slip slop slap references and and things like that. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. So is that what you do when you, I guess, when you're sitting down and being like, okay, time to, to make another cool character? Is it searching through your childhood or speaking to other people that you went to school with and really finding out what's those kind of shared experiences that you all have? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You have to, um, like, these characters kind of, like, are part, well, they have to be part of a, like, where the country is from. They're part of their culture or part of their, like, their history. So like when, when Australians see these Pokemon, they feel already a connection with it because it already has like history, like with, with who they, how they grew up and the emotions that they feel with, with that Pokemon. And yeah, another thing though is um, with per- designing Pokemon is you have to also consider how they interact with the world that they live in. Like the, for example, Gallipoli is a nurse Pokemon. I wanted to make a Chansey-esque or or Dino-esque Pokemon, um, but felt like connected to Australia's history. And Gallipoli was, uh, I remember when I was a kid, when I learned about um, the donkey from the Anzac legend, I was like, oh, it's, this was like Mm. a really like memorable story. So I thought maybe this would like give some form of a, like a heartfelt kind of design. Yeah. Yeah. You these can ask amazing. me about any of these. <laughs> All these super things, you can ask me about any of them, and I'll like I'll give some. Okay, so uh, yeah, sorry that it. you are going to have to skip dinner, and we're going to be here till midnight, so I can keep asking <laughs> questions. Um, <laughs> I'm, that's fine with me. I can talk forever about that. That's stuff. cool. Uh, we've got a, a great question from. Let me see if I can try pulling it up because we've got a, a few really good ones. Um, let's start off with uh, Jacinta here. Uh, Jacinta said, "Loves the art. Uh, great work, Lizelle." Uh, what advice would you give someone wanting to get into the industry? All right. Well, actually, I guess it's what you determine by, by getting into the industry. But I think building up a follower is really important and trying to engage with people as well. If you go to events and meetups like Bear and Pixels or if you go to Pizza and Pixels, I think is in Canberra. I'm not sure what Melbourne does, but I'm sure they have plenty. Um, and just <laughs> they, You just like really just like get yourself in there or get yourself out there and like carry a business, carry good business cards, make sure your portfolio is like accessible, even Mm. without internet, just have some on your phone and uh, just learn, like watch GDC talks and, and learn from um, other developers to like really like connect and do contract work too. Like do freelance. Yeah. I saw, I don't know if I got a chance to put it up, but you did like uh, a penny arcade for, was it Samurai Punk? Yeah, Samurai yeah, Punk, yeah. Cool. And I've also done some shirt designs for them too. And nice. I'm, I'm doing contract work for stuff like Chaos Theory and some other undisclosed. <laughs> <That's what it's, laughs> you, can, you can tell us, we won't tell anyone. Um, uh, a great question here from, uh, let's see, it was uh, Mega Broderick, uh, who wanted to know, 
uh, if you learned or researched more things while while making them, or did you just know from the start? Uh, so I guess you can interpret that as when you were creating the Pokemon, did you know, bang straight away, this is the direction I was going to take, or did it, it take a bit of researching to to really figure it out? Well, it was a bit of both. Like I said, I I was always um, fascinated with uh, the po- how Pokemon and how Game Freak develops their their stuff, their games, and reading interviews and what what, and I've always like. I've, I've designed probably maybe a thousand Pokemon at this stage and several regions and stuff like that, just for fun. And so this one was like, I guess, like I was able to really like hone in and focus on just the Australia aspect. And what was the question again? <laughs> uh, I think that was it. Like, yeah, uh, how do you go about researching yeah. the different areas? And you touched on it before where you were talking about uh, drawing from your own experiences and that kind of thing. Um, when yeah. will, will Pokemon Yena be done? Like, do you have a, a, oh, well. a, a limit or is it just going to be <laughs> as so long as you've got those experience, you'll keep throwing them, throwing them out there? Well, the, the Pokemon themselves seem to like be an endless pit because there's just so many great ideas. And I know that like, if they were to make this game, oh, I'm disappearing again. If they were to make this game, like at least, uh, <laughs> like a hundred of them would be cut because I know they wouldn't make this many. But um, I think the game, the, the concepts will be done when I have enough to fill out a book that matches this cool. level, which um, which include like route concepts, character concepts, like uh, customizations and stuff. And then just, yeah, I've got the, I've been done the story. I've got the um, enemy villainous team done and stuff. So I yeah, did just say that. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I almost want to keep oh, scrolling see. down so I can, can see some of it. Cause yeah, I saw you share the, um, uh, what was the name of the, the bad team? Team Outlaw. There you go. They're looking super cool. Yeah. Well, when you do uh, have the book <laughs> out, we better get a signed copy for AI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I I can drop one in. Sounds good. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think we've got. Uh, we're running out of time. Um, we really? was there oh, any more questions? <laughs> uh, <laughs> really quick. <laughs> nah, it has gone super quick. Um, I guess just a, a few quick ones. Uh, a lot of people saying that they're a big fan of your work. Uh, I won't bring them all up on screen. Oh, I might awesome. kind of cycle through it as as we're going. Um, Mark's keen to know if you're uh, working in Unity at the moment. Yes. Cool, perfect. Yes, but I've also worked with Unreal. Cool. Nice, cool. Um, Our next project will be on Unreal, I think. Awesome, cool. Uh, any reason for that or just want to experiment a bit? Um, uh, it's a different style. I think that Unity does better with 2D and Unreal does better with 3D. And there's some like things I want to work with Unreal. Yeah. Cool, perfect. Um, I will stop there else I'm just going to keep, keep throwing questions <laughs> out. And I, I know we've kind of kind of hit our time. Yeah, I got one question, oh, um, and then oh, sorry. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I, I was, was going to say, say I, like, oh, sorry. <laughs> <I'm delayed. laughs> delayed. sorry, you, delayed. you go, you go, you go. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say that, like, um, I'm happy to do a second interview if you guys want to, because there's still like a heap of questions left. I can do this again. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, that, that sounds cool. Yeah. For sure, definitely. definitely. Let us know in the chat what you would want to know for next time, and we can prepare and make sure that I have all the the cool stuff up on screen. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, so one, maybe words of wisdom to those looking to get into the industry or getting into art or 3D art or game art or design. Any words of wisdom from you? Uh, carry a sketchbook with you and draw all the time. <laughs> and another yeah. thing is just don't be afraid to put your stuff online. Start an Instagram where you post your sketches and stuff and your art and you, you, like, you have to kind of like build your own... I guess base or just like brand online and you can connect that way. It's it's one of, it's so easy to connect with people nowadays and, and build your portfolio. It's yeah. yeah just so just start really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just all the time. It doesn't matter if you, you there's no like real right or wrong on how to draw. Just do it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this afternoon or the evening. Yeah, thank you. Um, no. Definitely could have gone on for longer. Um, Craig, do you want yeah. to do a shout out for our next event and open day if you've got yeah, that prepared? Yeah, definitely. So uh, 
If you're keen to hear more from more people in the industry, uh, in addition to hopefully having Lazelle back, uh, next week we have uh, Ben Dreas. Ben's an AAE grad who has worked on uh, Bioshock Infinite and a whole bunch of other titles, uh, currently working with the amazing uh, indie studio Uppercut Games on whatever cool stuff they're working on. Uh, I will we'll ask him the hard questions and get the big reveal, uh, or probably not, but we'll find out uh, a whole bunch about uh, his experience. Uh, then make sure you keep an eye out. Uh, There'll be more details coming out soon. We'll have an open day at each of our campuses so you can come along and find out more about that. That's August 16th. And you can go along to my favourite website and yours, aae.edu.au, to find out about both of them. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks for that, Craig. And thank you so much for spending your evening with us. See you next week, everyone. Yeah, thank you. See ya. Bye. See ya. Bye. <laughs>